they wanted to give us everything. They didn't want to hold anything back. So they were like, okay, we're going to go from cover to cover. And we're not going to miss any of God's word. And this is the way we're going to do it. And we've been doing it like this all along. So I'm so thankful for that, that we continued that in our church. And that's been um, something that has carried us through in God's word because there's safety in that. We'll, we'll, we'll get the whole, you know, of God's word. Pastor Chuck has started out saying, what if you received a letter from somebody and you just started it right at the middle of the letter and maybe at the end? Would you get the whole picture of what your friend is trying to tell you, you know? We're like, no way. So why would we do that to the word of God? Let's just open up the Bible. And um, one thing that Pastor Paul has always wanted in this church is that we would have a through the Bible ministry. And we have one here with uh, Dave Clark and uh, Helen Clark encouraging those to go through the Bible together in a year. You know, they have different methods, different ways to go through it. Um, and then, of course, you get these teachings and... Um, it was, it was kind of cool because when I was reading through the Bible myself, you know, and I would stumble all over the place, I'd, you know, I, I, I'd get through Genesis and then I'd, I, 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 I go, oh, I didn't read it three days and I, I missed parts of Leviticus and, you know, I got to continue on and I got to keep going in Exodus and all this, right? Um, what was cool was that sometimes I would read through the Word of God or whatever book I would pick up in, in John or, you know, Acts or whatever. Then I would come to a study on a Wednesday night or on a, on a um, Sunday morning or even on, uh, at a marriage night. And I would have that word sort of opened up and expounded to me by, by the pastors. Oh man, that brought so much insight. So don't discredit that. Go through the word of God yourself and then see how the Lord will connect those pieces. Maybe even by listening on uh, K-Wave. Uh, Willis told me, yeah, I, I'll, I'll listen to K-Wave you know, from time to time. What pastors do you listen to now, you know? And they'll open it up. So you're like, all right. So just a bit of encouragement. But as we continue our reading through the Word of God, we were in 2 Samuel chapter 15 last week. So guess where we are this week? 2 Samuel chapter 16. And uh, so it's just really sweet um, to go through the Word of God. I don't know that these scriptures, these this portion of... The word is very sweet. <laughs> it's a very difficult time in David's life. It's a ver very difficult time in the children of Israel's lives. As they're seeing this uh, turmoil that's taking place between a son and a father. Uh, a king in his kingdom. And, uh, and the things that have come upon him. Even, even by way of his own uh, falling. You know, uh, judgment coming upon him because the Lord had already pronounced that over him. And, oh, that hurts. I don't know if you've ever been in that place where you maybe, you know, got tripped up in something. And, and boy, you didn't, you know, you went into it kind of wholeheartedly. Let's be real, right? We go into sin sometimes wholeheartedly. <laughs> You know, maybe at first we don't intend to maybe go that far and all of a sudden sin, what does it do? It keeps you longer than you wanted to stay, cost you more than you wanted to pay, and keep you far more than you wanted to stay, you know. Um, but um, really, if we want to be real, sometimes we throw ourselves into sin. And then there's consequences to that. There's consequences to our sin and and even though we don't experience them right away, oh man, the hurt that comes afterwards. Um, I've shared with you guys about my, my testimony and even to this day, I still feel like I experienced some of the, you know, the, the repercussions of what I could have done when I was younger, like finish high school, you know? <laughs> and uh, uh, to this day, I, I have a hard time with, you know, employment and all this kind of got to prove myself and all those things. So. Um, but there are consequences to our actions. And I think that's built in, in there by the Lord. Because I think that the Lord doesn't want to um, let us get away with it. And not because he's out to get us, but because he wants to bring us closer to him. I think those times that we've ever sinned, and, um, and I'm speaking for myself, 
I'm, I'm out on the ledge right here. When I've uh, repented and gone back to the Lord, I've been so sorrowful and so ashamed. And then when I've experienced the love of God for me that he says, hey, I forgive you, but I'm going to also take you through those things that, that, that are going to hurt after this. Oh, Lord. And uh, it draws us closer to the Lord sometimes. I, 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 I like those times. <laughs> you know, I don't like to sin. No way, man, because I better learn from the last time. But I like those times, even when I'm going through a trial, that it makes me call on the Lord. David's going through a trial. And you're going to see him call on the Lord. Or you're going to at least see the Lord's calling in his life as we go through these scriptures. Um, I don't want to be a downer, but so I want to start it off with Psalm chapter 1. Because it speaks about a man who's blessed, who's actually blessed because he's walking with the Lord and, and not sitting with sinners or, you know, being in their path. Listen to Psalm chapter 1. It says, Blessed is a man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the path of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. And in his law he meditates day and night. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth its fruit in its seasons, whose leaves also shall not wither, and whatever he does shall prosper. Well, let me read you the other part of that. The ungodly are not so, but are like the chaff which are, that the wind drives away. Therefore the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous, for the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the ungodly shall perish. Those are true words of God and of the Lord in our lives, you know. And uh, I want to be blessed. I want to be happy in Christ and just joyful to be, you know, walking with him. And, and we can definitely take a lot of counsel from that. But it doesn't seem that Absalom has taken any of that into his uh, into his life, uh, applied any of that, you know, seen the devastation that uh, is going to happen. Uh, we look to it and we go, man, the things that this guy is out for and the, uh, the heartache that's um, brought to David's home by Absalom, his own son. You know, uh, it's been said that nobody can break a parent's heart like their children. <laughs> Ah, oh, it hurts. And if you've ever been in that place, cry out to the Lord. He'll hear you. He hears you. He loves you. He also loves your children. He loves your kids. And uh, he won't let them get away or scurly away, you know. God, God's still involved in their lives. But let me, uh, let me by way of recap, uh, go back to this guy that the king said to Ittai, the Gittite, why are you also going with us? Return and remain with the king. So he's like, hey, why are you coming? And this guy's like, I'm going with you, David. No matter what, wherever you go. Uh, the cool part of this is that if we make our, our lives with the Lord, it, it, we'll be like Naomi and Ruth, right? Saying, hey, your people will be my people. Your God will be my God. Wherever you go, I'll go, you know? And that's what this guy did. So you see that even in the midst of um, uh, the people that are turning against David, you also see some people that are turning uh, to David. And uh, I think that's a lot like if, even in our lives, right? We see a lot of people that are turning away from the Lord. And we're going, oh, Lord, help them. They need you, you know. But we're also seeing those people that are turning to Jesus Christ. And we're seeing many people get saved, even in this time right now, you know? Oh, uh, wow, what's going on in the world around us right now? Well, a lot of people need Jesus. They need him even more than ever before. They need him. It's just a little bit of an echo, but that's okay. So um, it says, verse 19, Then the king said to Elke, okay. But Itai answered the king and said, 
as the Lord lives and as my Lord the King lives, surely in whatever place my Lord the King shall be, where, whether in death or in life, even there, I also, uh, also your servant will be. So he's like, man, I'm going. I'm going with you, David, no matter what. You know who else went with David, which was cool about last week? Was the 600 men that were with David all along. Uh, you guys remember the, 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 the original 600? Well, they stuck with David, even through thick and thin. You know, they were the, uh, we called them the misfits, you know? Uh, if I look around the church, I, I, I look at you guys, you guys all look like a bunch of misfits. But what did I say about mis misfits in Christ? They fit perfectly with the Lord. He, he makes a place for us. He even says that about us in heaven. Could you imagine that he's making a place for us to, to be with him? That way where he is, there will, will be also. So that we'll fit in with Jesus Christ, you know, in heaven. But also here in, in, in church. God makes a place for you to serve or to uh, give or to uh, bless others, you know. Or for you to be blessed. See, see what God's going to do. So we continue on in the things that God wants to do because we want to be where God's people are. And also uh, we learned about Zodok and uh, also in the, in, in the, the Levites that came along, they tried to bring the Ark of the Covenant. David said, no, take him, take him back, go back to Jerusalem. And uh, these people that are with them, um, uh, David says, no, return and go there and, you know, pretty much keep the Ark of the Covenant in Jerusalem. Also, verse 30 says, so David went up, that's in 2 Samuel chapter 15, it says, so David went up by the ascent of the Mount of Olives, uh, Olives and wept as he went up. Do you guys remember who else was in the Mount of Olives? Jesus. Do you remember what he cried? Or he, he was sweating great blood. Uh, yeah. He was, uh, he was going through a great trial. Um, and David right here is going to the Mount of Olives. And he's going through a real hard trial that he's going through. So, and he has his head covered and went barefoot. And all the people who were with him uh, covered their heads and, and went up weeping as they went up. So this is a really hard, hard thing that the people are going through that are with David. They are just going through it uh, with David. So not only that, what, what also happened in the Mount of Olives? When he was in, uh, in the Mount of Olives, that's where they came to arrest him, right? And who was with them? One named Judas who had betrayed him, right? And likewise here, it says that Ahithophel is among the conspirators with Absalom. Ah, that, that's what David's encountering. Absalom, who has betrayed his father, and also Ahithophel, who, is, uh, who was David's closest counselor. And this guy was a, he was a really good counselor of God's word. Um, uh, he was an advisor to David, a real close friend to him, and uh, he is, he's, you know, betrayed him at this point. So verse 32, it says, And it happened when David had come to the top of the mountain where he, um, where he worshipped God. So at that point, during that time, he chose to worship God, even though he's got all these things against him. You know? Have you, uh, have you been going through a trial in your life and you decided instead of, you know, just allowing the enemy to keep lying to me or allowing the enemy to have his way and, and give him, you know, any kind of room, uh, have you decided to worship God? Have you decided to spend time with the Lord Jesus Christ during those times, those hard things that may happen in your lives that uh, may take you by surprise? You know, that one, one morning, the morning you were doing just fine. And all of a sudden in the afternoon, it just started going really bad. 
you know? Those are really hard things in our lives, and um, what are we gonna do when those things happen? What are we gonna do when we uh, begin to start turning to the Lord in those things? So, worship the Lord. Verse 37, and I'll recap and end right here. It says, uh, I won't end there, but this is my recap. Verse 37, so Hushai, David's friend, went into the city and Absalom came into Jerusalem. Now, Hushai, Hushai was a, um, also an advisor of David. Hushai was also an advisor of David. And, um, and David sent them back to the city. David sent them back to, uh, uh, to the city to go and uh, pretty much be with Absalom, you know? Sort of be a counter uh, point or a counter counselor uh, against Ahithophel um, in counseling Absalom, you know? That way, maybe, you know, he can counsel them, hopefully, the right or wrong way. Either way, it'll work out. So let's go on in chapter 16, beginning in verse 1, which says, I'll read and then I'll pray. When David was a little past the mountain, uh, the top of the mountain, there was Ziba, the servant of Mephibosheth, who met him with a couple of saddled donkeys and on them 200 loaves of bread, 100 clusters of raisins, 100 uh, uh, summer fruits, and a skin of wine. And the king said to Ziba, What do you mean to do with these? So Ziba said, The donkeys are for the king, household to ride on. The bread are for, uh, and the summer fruit are for the young men to eat. And the wine for those who are faint in the wilderness to drink. And... Um, so let's pray right there. Father God, we just come before you and uh, we just thank you right now that you're with us, Lord. And um, we ask, Lord, that you would just, uh, just bless this time, that you would fill us with your Holy Spirit and give us understanding and teach us by your, by your word, Lord, what you want us to take from these scriptures tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All right. So again, what happens is David is now... Uh, at the top of the mount, mountain, uh, again, worshiping the Lord. And then that's when uh, David was a little past the top of the mountain. There was Ziba, the servant of Mephibosheth. And if you guys know who Mephibosheth is, yeah, he was, he was Saul's grandson. And, uh, and he came and ate at the king's table. You know, David... Uh, David went uh, to see at some point if there was anyone left of the household of Jonathan. And, and guess who he finds? He finds Mephibosheth. And Mephibosheth is, uh, is lame. And David says, hey, I don't want to do any, I don't want to bring any harm on you at all. But instead, I want to bless you. He gave him a piece of property and servants. And he also told them that from now on, he was going to eat at the king's table. Oh, how sweet, you know? So we get to sort of see a little bit of Mephibosheth here, you know? But we're going to see a bigger picture of Mephibosheth because I think right now he's being misrepresented, you know? But this guy Ziba comes to David, a uh, servant of uh, Mephibosheth, who met him with a cu uh, couple of saddled donkeys and on them 200 loaves of bread, 100 clusters of raisin, and 100 uh, summer fruits, and a skin of wine. And the king said to Ziba, to Z, uh, Ziba, what do you mean to do with these? So he's like, hey, what gives, man? What are you going to do with that, you know? And then he replies to, to King David, he says, so Ziba said, the donkeys are for the king's household to ride on. The bread are summer, and summer fruits for the young men to eat and the wine for those who are faint uh, in the wilderness to drink. So he's doing a good thing. He's bringing about refreshment and, uh, and even like the wine to, to help those that were weary in the, uh, in the wilderness, you know? So he's, he's doing a good thing 
Uh, but we're going to later find out that uh, he actually leaves Mephibosheth completely out of this deal. <laughs> you know? And he kind of takes credit for the whole thing. So, um, uh, and, and he lies about him. Verse 3, look at that. He says, then the king said, oh, about this bringing refreshment to David during this hard time. So what's happened to, uh, to David, and, and when you sort of see some parallels between David and Jesus Christ, I want to try to call him out. So like I said, he was in the Mount of Olives with um, there, uh, and he was weeping. David was weeping. The Lord was going through great agony uh, in the Mount of Olives. And uh, there at the Mount of Olives, his, betrayers, his betrayer came with an army. And likewise, here was um, David uh, told about um, even Ahithophel, who would betray him and uh, is now part of the conspirators. Uh, with Absalom. So it, it hurts, you know, to see these parallels, but these, these are the things that are going on. And then um, obviously Absalom turning against him. But what, the, what David chooses to do during that time, like I said, was to worship God. And he worshiped the Lord. And what did the Lord Jesus Christ choose to do? He chose to sit there and pray to God, to be there and spend time with his Father, and to even ask him, Lord, if it's your will, let this cup pass over me. But nevertheless, not my will, but your will be done. That's just playing out, laying it all down to the Lord. And saying, God, I want what your will is, not what I want. Let it be your will. And the Lord Jesus Christ humbly uh, surrendered himself to the will of God. And... Um, and likewise, David here uh, begins to worship the Lord. Uh, but now he's getting refreshed. So at some point, even there in the, in the, the Mount of Olives with uh, the Lord, he was refreshed by the angels, remember? So Ziba, even though he comes in with sort of a kind of a sideways agenda, the Lord uses this to refresh David and the people. He uses them. He says, all right. You're going to do something sly over here, but I'm going to use it for God's purposes. You know, so always know that God is always interested in your lives. No matter what you're going through, the, the Lord will bring refreshment. Sometimes the Lord will bring refreshment even by your enemies, <laughs> you know. But sometimes he'll bring refreshment by those who are around you that love you, who care about you. that want to spend time with you and want to say, hey, I'll sit with you even while you go through this. That's the best time to be able to go and be with someone when they're going through hard times. You know, we always sort of feel awkward um, when somebody's maybe had a loss in the family or, um, or even, um, you know, going through some difficult thing, maybe even in their family currently. But when they choose to just sit with you, say, you know what, I know what you're going through. Or sometimes it doesn't, if you've never been through that, it's okay to say, you know, I'm sorry that you're going through this. I just want to sit with you. Is that okay? I think that's the best thing that you could do during those times when uh, refreshment is needed, when, when strength and um, uh, restoration is needed during that time. And uh, as the Lord leads, God will give, give counsel. But this guy, Ziba, um, uh, David asks, what do you mean by this? But he says, hey, look, this is for refreshment for, for everybody. So then the king said, and where is your master's son? Speaking of Mephibosheth, he's like, hey, where, where's, where's Mephibosheth? Tell me about him. And unfortunately, this is what Ziba says. And Ziba said to the king, indeed, he is staying in Jerusalem, for he said, today the house of Israel will, re will restore the kingdom of my father to me. And uh, that's flat out false. We're going to see that later on as we go through the Word of God. I think chapter 24 around there. But um, you're going to see that that's just, that's not Mephibosheth. That's not his heart. This guy took all this stuff and went to David and, you know, sort of took credit for it. And so, verse 4, So the king said to Ziba, Here are all, here all that belongs to Mephibosheth is yours. And of course, he's like, And Ziba said, 
I humbly bow before you that I may find favor in your sight, my Lord, O King. So a lot of turmoil, huh? A lot of stuff, in and outs going on. Uh, people taking advantage, even as David is on the run. Um, really, and David's not really on the run for his own sake. As we learned last week, David is more interested in the people. He wants the people to be safe. That's a good, that's a good king, you know? He, uh, he definitely, I'm sure, is feeling the weight of maybe feeling like he's failed as a, as a parent, you know? Uh, some of the, the, the things that maybe he didn't, um, you know, bring about with Absalom, you know, and bringing about uh, correction, uh, the kind of judgment that was needed for, for uh, Absalom to learn. But uh, nonetheless, I'm sure that's weighing heavy on him. But, you know, right now, David is in a place where he had also asked God to forgive him for the things that he did, right? He asked God to forgive him. Do you think God forgave him? Absolutely. There's no question about that. David repented. But then there were still the consequences, and that's what we're seeing, um, what's going on now. And then verse 5 says, Now when King David came to Bahurim, there was a man from the family of the house of Saul, whose name was Shimei. All these ay ay ay's, you know, Shimei, Hushai, all these, you know, people named ay ay ay's. Anyways, um, but this guy comes, whose name was Shimei, the son of Gera, coming from there. He he came out cursing continually as he came, and he threw stones at David and at all the servants of King David, and all the people and all the mighty men were all, were all, uh, were on his right hand and on his left. Okay, so if you could see this procession, right? David's in the middle, and this guy's coming out cursing David. Every curse word you could probably think of, and then any cursing that he could throw at David and lop at him. And you're gonna see some of the cursings that he says over, over David. But he just begins to rail on David as uh, he's coming against David. Uh, and really, in this procession, he begins to even throw rocks at them, you know? And these guys are hardened dudes, all right? The 600 that are traveling with David and then the rest of the people that fled from Jerusalem with David. This is a big procession of people, you know? So any one of these 600 men, even probably the weakest one, could have went up to this guy and just took him out. You know, so I don't know what this guy is thinking, but he's coming up against David. And it's unfortunate because, you know, when we're at our lowest point, when we're going through the, some hard and difficult things, um, the hardest thing to hear is where somebody's really ridiculing you, you know. But who's the, who's the accuser of the brother and who's the one that comes at us with all kinds of lies? What's his name? Satan. He comes at us and he rails against us. Oh, so you call yourself a Christian. How about all these consequences now that you're suffering because of your God? Oh, I thought he was going to protect you. And then he begins to just insult you and throw all these accusations. You know what we're to do? Hide right in the midst of those that are mighty before the Lord and say, God, please help me during this time. Help me to go through this time and don't allow the enemy's lies to get to me. Let those people around you to speak truth into your life. You know what? When, whenever I've been down, <laughs> and I've been down sometimes a lot of times, <laughs> and I begin to even repeat the lies that the enemy has hurled at me. You know what those that are around me that, have, that love the Lord, that know his word have told me? No, 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 no. Cut that out. That's from the enemy. We're not going to accept that. Lord, in Jesus' name, right now, we do not accept these lies from the enemy. Back to the pit of hell, Lord. In Jesus' name. And Lord, let, let the Lord fight for you. Let the Lord be your refuge and be your strength during that time. Let those brothers around you, uh, brothers and sisters around you, 
come alongside you and say, hey, speak truth to you. You know, because there's going to be a lot of people that speak lies sometimes. Even the very people that you, you uh, hang around with. You know, even the people from the world. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's church people, man. <laughs> you never know how they're going to be. And uh, many people have also, in the past, have been lied to by the enemy to leave a place of security with the Lord. You know, sometimes even their own post or their own place in, in, in the body of Christ. And I, I've, I've seen it. And I've gone to them and said, no, that's a lie from the enemy. Don't do that. Don't go. Stay in a place where you're humble. Allow the Lord to be with you during this time. And, and don't give in to the lies of the enemy. These are lies. But there's going to be shimmies in our lives. Let them shimmy out of your life. I'm not serious. <laughs> shimmy out, Lord. Get this guy out of here. And then listen to those that are got a steady walk with the Lord. That are about going along with the procession. Those that are walking with the Lord in sync, in step, and saying, you know what, I want to be about God's business. I don't know what's going on right now. I don't know the trial that I'm going through, but I'm going to trust the Lord. And, and I, like I said, I've, I've been blessed by allow, uh, allowing people to speak into my life. And uh, if you do that, you'll be blessed too. You'll see how the Lord will use people even around you that are really going to speak truth into your life. But this Shimei, verse 7, also Shimei says thus, When he cursed, come out, come out, you bloodthirsty man, you rogue. So these are the accusations that Shimei is throwing at David. Now, was David a bloodthirsty man? No, he was, he was a man of war. He definitely won a lot of battles, but his, he wasn't going out battling for himself. So he wasn't bloodthirsty. That's a lie. You know? What happened with the Lord Jesus Christ when he was tempted in the wilderness? There was a little bit of truth sprinkled in there. The enemy would bring a little bit of, little bit of truth and then lie. Lie to try to get the Lord Jesus Christ to trip up. Did the Lord tri trip up? No. He stood on the very word of God. On every word of God. And that's what we're to do. So, was David a rogue? No. He had to flee the house of Saul, but he was not a rogue. He was not out there roaming around being a rogue. Verse 8 says, The Lord has brought up upon you all the blood of the house of Saul. Of Saul. He did not bring any blood upon the house of Saul. You know who brought bloodshed on the house of Saul? Saul. Saul. So again, no, he's accusing him of wrong. In whose place you have reigned. Who put David in the place of Saul? The Lord. God put him there. Hey, David wasn't reigning in a place that he wasn't to be. The Lord had ordained that. He was anointed of the Lord. And the Lord has delivered the kingdom into the hands of Absalom, your son. The Lord has not done that. So again, uh, be careful for those that say, Thus says the Lord. And then proceed to have nothing to do with what they're saying about God. You know? Mm -mm. Yeah, prophets used to be stoned for that back in the days. But be careful for those that say, thus says the Lord, and their lives don't, don't live it. You got to be careful for those. You follow only the Lord. So now you are caught in your own evil because you are a bloodthirsty man. And uh, definitely, David had a lot of faults. You know? It's sort of like us, right? Uh, nobody needed to tell us when we were in the world that we were sinners. I already knew that. I just didn't know how to get my sins forgiven until I came to the Lord Jesus Christ. And he forgave me my sins. Now, I'm a saved sinner. <laughs> I'm saved, I'm going to heaven, but do I still sin? Yeah, I fall. But you know what? The Lord saves me. He forgives me. He helps me and allows me to just keep on keeping on with him. So Abishai, verse 9, the son of Zariah, the king, uh, said to the king, Why should this dead 
So, so this guy who's standing right there, this is so cool. I think this guy is cool. All right, I'm going to call it. Maybe I'm wrong or I'm not. But I'm going to call him out too. All right? Verse 9 says, Then Abishai, the son of uh, Zariah, the, again, these shies, right? Ay, ay, ay. Abishai, the son of Zariah, said to the king, Why should this dead dog curse my lord, the king? Please, let me go over and take off his head. <laughs> Dude, this guy's cool. Okay, wait a minute, Pastor Eileen. What are you thinking, man? You know, sometimes you got some people even around you that are good intention, that want to just go lop off heads. <laughs> like Peter, right? <laughs> lop off ears, you know? You, we got to be careful. We got to be careful of that. You know, um, we have many examples in the Word of God that that first reaction may not be the right response you got to be careful with that you know even if somebody may agree with your pain with your hurt with what you're going through and maybe even with your desire to do something rash you know don't give in to that sometimes those people are not sent by the lord they want to go lop off heads and that's not what we're about we don't go lop off heads or ears uh, what did James and John say to the people of Samaria when they were like walking with the Lord and the Lord, they, 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 try, to, they try to go to Samaria. And here's, here's the Lord with the sons of Zebedee, you know. I think these guys are, this guy's related to them or something, a little bit. But John and James are walking with the Lord and some, the Samaritans didn't want the Lord to get, stop there and be refreshed. They were like, no, keep going, you know, don't stop here. And James and John said to Jesus Christ, should we call fire from heaven? <laughs> and what did Jesus tell them? You don't know, know what spirit you're of. We got to be careful. We got to be careful who we align ourselves with too, even in those times that, you know what, it may feel good to, to you know, say, yeah, let's, let's do that. Let's, let's jump in all in right here and let's just go lop off some heads. No. That's not what the Lord would want us to do. And it's really cool what David's response is in this. Like I said, I only say this guy was cool just because, man, he was like ready to go. And I think that's all of the 600 men that was right there. This, this guy, like I said, was probably the weakest one of them all. He was ready to go. But he was, uh, he was maybe not in the right spirit. Okay? But David said, What have I to do with you, you sons of you sons of Zariah. So he's, he's called, he says, oh, no, what, what, do, what do I have? What, what should I do with you, you know? Like almost like, oh, hold on. Hold your horses, man. Wait a minute. Think about this all the way through. So let him curse because the Lord has sent him. Curse David, who then shall say, why have you done this? So David is, is pretty much surrendering his life over to the Lord and saying, you know what? I'm just going to leave it all to God. David doesn't leave it to Shimei. He doesn't leave it to Zariah. He leaves it to the Lord. And he says, you know what? Maybe this guy was sent by the Lord. He's in a low place. David's in a hard place right now where he's going through this affliction where, where he has his trusted advisor uh, turn on him and uh, join Absalom, uh, Absalom and in his own son. David then goes further and says to him, And David said to Abishai and all his servants, See how my son who came from my own body seeks my life? How much more now may this Benjamite? So he's telling them, look. Look at how bad it is. Even my own son has turned against me. So wow, how much more this guy? Didn't the Lord say that about us? Right? He says, hey, we're going to be ridiculed by this world. We're going to be treated. Um, if the Lord was not treated so nicely, right? He says, how do you think they're going to treat my servants? We're going to get a taste of that, you guys. Even when we're going out and 
witnessing for the Lord or doing what we do for the Lord, even being a witness in our own jobs or with, with people around us. I, I've been ridiculed. Oh, come on, man, you're not going to go out with us? Oh, that's right. You don't drink. Oh, that's right. Hey, you can be our designated driver. Come along. And I'm like, ah, oh, man. So uh, it, it is... um. It is a sad thing when, when you have um, people that are really ridiculing you, but David's like, hey, even my own son has turned against me. How much more of this Benjamite? Saying, hey, this guy's going to, he, he's, he's doing just the same. It's okay. Let him go. How much more now may this Benjamite, he says. So he asked the servants that are with him, kind of like let him alone. Let him alone, he says, and let him curse for so the Lord has ordered him. Then this is so cool that David says this in verse 12. It may be that the Lord will look on my affliction and the Lord will repay me with good for his cursing this day. Again, where does, the, where does David leave it at? At the Lord's hands. This is, this is some insight into David's heart uh, uh, after God's own... Um, David after God's own heart, right? That's where you sort of see that come out. Not in the high times, you know, that David is uh, walking with the Lord and just, you know. It's when the low points that you see David calling out on the Lord when he begins to read, uh, write all the Psalms during these times of affliction that you see where David's heart is. And it's after God's own heart. You know, you actually see the heart of David and he says, no. I'm going to trust God even during this time. I'm not going to, I'm not going to allow this to, to get to me. I'm going to trust the Lord. And that's what we in our lives need to do. When these things come against us, <clears throat> when even our own kids turn against us, oh, like I said, it hurts. Trust the Lord. He'll take you through that. If you have a friend that turned against you in the past, give that over to the Lord. Don't carry around any bitterness. You know who carried around bitterness? This guy by the name of uh, Ahithophel. And we'll learn, learn a little bit more about him as we continue on. Ooh, let's keep going. And David said to Ahisai, the servants, oh, uh, verse 13. And David, and as David and his men went along the road, Shimei went along the hillside opposite him and cursed him as he went, threw stones at him and kicked up dust. Could you imagine this guy opposite David and he's just throwing up dirt? I, I can even see it. You know, this guy just kicking up dirt and picking up rocks and chucking them. Now that the king and all the people who are with him because uh, became, became weary, so they refreshed themselves again. They need refreshment. They just stopped and refreshed themselves. Meanwhile, okay, we'll get through these real quick. Meanwhile, Absalom and all the people, the men of Israel, came to Jerusalem, and Ahithophel, David's most trusted advisor, who conspired with Absalom, was with him. And so it was, he joined that conspiracy, when Hushai, uh, Hushai the Archite, David's friend came to Absalom, that Hushai said to Absalom, Long live the king! Long live the king! So Hushai goes in stealth, man. He's like, Long live the king! He's trying to just get in there on, on the, you know, under the radar, sort of as an advisor. So Absalom said to Hushai, Is this not your, uh, is this your loyalty to your friend? He's talking about David. He's like, isn't this your loyalty to your friend? Why did you not go with your friend? And Hushai said to Absalom, No, but whom the Lord and his people and all the men of Israel cho uh, chose, his I will be, and with him I will remain. Furthermore, who shall I serve? Should I not serve in the presence of his son, as I have served in the in your father's presence, so, so will I be in your presence. So, um, again, Hushai just comes in right in stealth. 
He's going to be a spy for David, but he's also there as a counterpoint or as a counter counsel to um, uh, Ahisophel, uh, Ahisophel's counsel. And it's going to turn out really good. I'm glad that he's there because he really does help David. And he really goes um, uh, for it. So then Absalom said to Ahisophel, give advice to what we should do. And Ahisophel said to Absalom, go into your father's concubines, whom he has left to keep the house. And all Israel will hear that you are abhorred by your by your father then the hands of all who are with you will be strong so again this this guy is um the grandfather of Bathsheba and he has carried in his life a bitterness and this bitterness has grown to the point where he's turned against David at this point and he's saying even something again he was a good counselor to David. He was a good guy, you know, during the time that he served David. But at this point, he goes completely off the rails. And what he says to do is, is nothing short of sick. It's wrong. It's evil. And he tells them to do this. And uh, unfortunately, this was told David that this would actually happen. So he's actually even saying what, the, I, he wasn't even in that conversation. So a little bit he's speaking for the Lord. You know who else? Um, the, the Pharisees, when Jesus was, uh, was uh, on trial, they said about Jesus, oh, one should die for the nation. Not knowing that they were speaking for the Lord even though they were meant meaning that evil. So this is, this is, really, this is really sad, what, he, what he's telling us to do. So those concubines that, that were left behind by David, 10 of them, there to, guard, to, to be uh, at the house. Um, this was uh, Ahithophel's counsel to Absalom. So they pitched a tent for Absalom on the top of the house, and Absalom went into his father's concubines in the sight of all Israel. Evil evil again this is just um this is a really sad thing to see uh, but the lord also told david ahead of time that this would happen which is really hard hard to see it actually unfold right the consequences of his sin verse 23 now the advice of ahithophel which gave in those uh, which he gave in those days was as if one had inquired of the oracles of god again he was in some respect, again, had wisdom from God when he was counseling uh, David. He had wisdom. You know, you can have street smarts. That can only get you so far. You can have school smarts, and that can only get you so far. But if you have the wisdom of God in your life, that'll get you very, very far. Desire the wisdom of God. Read some Proverbs. See the wisdom of God in, in our lives. So, so was all the advice of Ahithophel, both with David and with Absalom. So even in this, you know, he was speaking the oracles of God. He was like, he pronounced this because this was exactly what God said would happen. And, um, but you'll see what Ahithophel comes to, to the end of his uh, counsel. And unfortunately, at some point, that bitterness got to him. And it's going to take him out. That same bitterness. It will take him out. And uh, you'll learn that in chapter 17. Pastor Paul next week. And um, again, what we could take from these scriptures is when you're going through the battles, the trials, um, stick really close to the Lord and his people. Allow them to speak truth into your life and don't believe the lies of the enemy. Amen? Father God, we just want to come before you and uh, we thank you, Lord, for this time that you've given us, Lord, to go through your word. We thank you, Lord, for showing us, Lord, examples in your word of even your great love for us, that you'll refresh us, that you'll be with us, Lord, that you'll never leave us nor forsake us, not even if the rest of the world leaves us, Lord. You'll still be with us, Lord, so we thank you for that. We love you and we praise you and we give the rest of this, this evening to you in Jesus' name.
Amen.